Всем привет, добро пожаловать на YouTube канал Вул Хоккей. В этом видео мы посмотрим обзор матча суперсерии 1982-1983 годов между сборной клубов СССР и Монреаль Канедианс. В суперсерии 1975 года ЦСКА усиленный несколькими игроками из других советских клубов уже играл с Монреалем. Тот матч завершился в ничью 3-3, где, конечно же, все запомнили феноменальную игру Владислава Третьяка. Обзор данного матча есть на канале, ссылка будет в описании под видео. Несмотря на то, что суперсерия считалась именно клубной, в 1982 году в Северную Америку поехала так называемая сборная клубов Советского Союза. По сути, это была национальная команда, советской дружине нужно было реабилитироваться за фиаско на Олимпиаде в Лейк Плейсиде, и для этого было необходимо использовать любую лазейку для подготовки к будущему олимпийскому турниру, до которого оставалось чуть больше года. Конечно, можно было также в турне отправить армейцев и усилить команду другими игроками, но здесь сыграл чисто психологический фактор. Было необходимо, чтобы это была именно сборная в красных свитерах с буквами СССР впереди. В первом матче суперсерии 28 декабря 1982 года подопечные Виктора Тихонова проиграли Эдмонтон Ойлерс. Через день в Квебеке советская сборная обыграла Нордикс. Матч с Монреалем состоялся в канун Нового года, 31 декабря 1982 года, ровно через 7 лет после встречи московских армейцев с Хабс на той же арене Монреаль Форум. В составе Канадиенс в той игре принимали участие такие игроки, как Робинсон, Гейни, Трамбле, Нейзланд и Лефлер. Монреаль в том сезоне неплохо провели регулярный чемпионат, одержав 42 победы в 80 матчах. Они заняли второе место в своем дивизионе, уступив первое место Бостон Брюнс. Но в плей-офф Хабс в первом же раунде уступили Баффало 0-3. В состав сборной клубов СССР вошли игроки четырех команд. 13 человек из ЦСКА, 7 из Динамо, 5 из Спартака и 2 человека из Торпеда Горький. Одним из главных игроков той команды был, конечно же, Владислав Третьяк который своей игрой доказывал, что именно он является лучшим голкипером мира. And you want to run into someone, you take that extra step, you go maybe two, three, four feet more than you should. Don't use the, your head like you would earlier or after you get settled, after you make contact. You make an error like that, and, and Marwa just misses check, and it, as you know, is out with a broken leg. You've got to guard against that, your emotionalism, when it first starts, uh, when the beginning of the game comes. Wally Harris is the referee, Gerard Gauthier and Wayne Body are the linesmen tonight. And it was right here in the Montreal Forum where the Soviets and the professionals first met the opening game of the great series of 1972. Played right here. And in the net that night was the man that is in goal tonight, Vladislav Trechak, who last night in the Quebec City Coliseum got his first shot out ever in almost 30 games against the pros. And he won the hearts of everyone in this building. If you saw the standing ovation he got, he said earlier today that if he'd like to play in the NHL after the Olympics and he wants to play with Montreal. The man in there right now is Richard Sebeny for the Montreal Canadiens. They're starting goalie. Doug Rickenheiser skates to center ice to face off against Igor Larionov. And game three is underway with Larry Robinson beating Ryan Walter. And now back to Rip Green. Robinson, Rickenheiser, he hits the Soviet blue line. Lafleur, the other forward out there for Montreal. But in possession is Fedosov losing it. The pass for Lafleur was not in his range. A great potential scoring chance there, but the Soviets move swiftly out. Larionov with Timonev inside the blue line. Back for Timonev. Good back checking by Walter of Montreal. Gives green possession. Now Robinson in behind the Canadian net. Kapustin. Edisov, the Russian defenseman, swings around behind the goal. Dumps it across and a shot by Shepelev handled by the goaltender 70. The second shot going wide. Shepelev trying to feed Shalinov as they bump in the corner. Kapustin against Robinson. 
Kelly Moe, Shepard, and it's wide. The slap shot. Danny bumping to push them off the puck. The posted foot shot, 70 rebound, Shalimov, 70 way out of the goal, and it's knocked back to center ice by the Canadian. Now, Sergei Kapustin. Or Pervukin. And the Canadians have it at center ice. Steve shut the left winger, drives it down to the right corner. Hudson Free in there. Shepelev. Or Pervukin and Shalimov. And the Soviets bring it out. Left wing pass for Kapustin, his shot. Savadier can't find it, but he's got it somewhere. In behind the goal they go, Ganey over on the boards. Passing it in front of the puck. And it hops out to number 30, Jerry Sima. Inside the Montreal line, he comes up. Bicar, bumped in the corner. Darnikov shot goes wide. Napier ahead for Ganey, touched his stick, it'll go all the way down to the Soviet corner. Icing called as Starikov picks it up. Lafleur, acted. Back for Guy Lafleur. In front to shot, a quick shot, a great save by Kretschow. The best save of the night, a blast from point blank range. Steve shot, a minute left. In the Soviet penalty, shoots from the angle. Here's Green, that's blocked by Acton off to a corner. Shut, lost control, falling on the play as Shepelev brings it out slowly with Shalibov. Scoreless game, 5.15 to play here in the first period. And I'm quite sure that this capacity crowd has received their money's worth already from the action they've seen here in the first 15 minutes. Just bristling action in the Montreal Forum. You wonder how they have a one and five if they could play like this every day. Play the Soviets every night. They might play a lot better. Ludwig's long shot is handled by Trechak to Fedosov off in the left corner. Walter keeps it in for Montreal off the floor escape. Now Vyacheslav Fedosov, the Soviet team captain. Deflected by Kutov into the crowd. You see how well Montreal's taken that center zone away from the Russians, especially coming out of their zone. As we look at Ryan Walter, one of the real big leaders on this Montreal Hockey Club, coming over in a trade earlier this season for Brian Engblom and Rod Engblom. And he's a fellow that, uh, there's a Bobby Orr, one of the all-time great defensemen looking on and probably enjoying this as much as we are. Barnikov lost it. Fed ahead for Nastin with shot inside the line. Shot goes down. Here's the pass for Cromwell. Winding is Robinson. And oh, again, Trechak. Knocks it high into the crowd. Trichek moving out to challenge Robinson was somewhat off balance, and he made the save with his goal stick. Trichek came up with two outstanding saves. Picard first on a shot from the point. Now Larry Robinson's shot from the top of the circle. Picard's was another extremely difficult one. He took the shot, Trombley cutting in front, deflected it, and went right to Trichek. That one had to be a fine save by Trichek, moving out and to his left, reaching up with his goal stick and knocking it over the glass. For Rejan Houle, he has difficulty against Zubkov, and the Soviets take it out of there. A Soviet player was injured on the play. He is lying down, it is Vladimir Zubkov, way back in the faceoff circle, he is faced out. Well, Zubkov, uh, Zubkov took a right from Chris Nyland. He took Nyland into the boards, and he got hit with one and went down. I think he was just trying to draw a penalty because the Russian defenseman was coming over at him in such an angle that it's going to block the referee's view and he's just uh, taking a little rest probably I don't think he's hurt that much but the Russians doing a fine job of containing Montreal along the boards there Montreal just dumping the puck back and forth along the boards really couldn't get it free for any play here's a play along the boards now you'll see this watch the right huh. actually it was Rajon Hull the surprise I thought it was Nyland if he hit him that good of one Nyland's a big tough kid there's there's a right by Hull. Lasted about as long as the recent Dilks Weaver fight in Las Vegas. I think uh, that one was a little bit of a dive. Uh huh. <laughs> and the Soviets come away to center ice. Prukov's shot is high, gloved by Sevigny. Robinson for Gini. 
Ganey across the line just at the siren to end the first period. As good a first period of international hockey as you're liable to see between the Soviets and the Montreal Canadiens tonight here in the Forum representing the pros of the National Hockey League. Some great scoring chances both ways. The play of seven year early on and then of Trechak in the closing seven or eight minutes. Simply outstanding. A goaltender's showcase here for these two in this contest this evening. So there's no score after one. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. And past Kazatanov it goes back to the Soviet zone. Now LaFleur takes a breather. Relieved by Guy Carbonneau. Canadians effectively killing off this power play, which has 30 seconds left in it. Mariana over to Krutov, over on the far side. Dumping it back out there. Here's Kazatana, fakes the slap shot. Now gets set, drills it through a maze. Puck is still loose, but up with it come the Montreal Canadiens, and it is shot down the ice by Keith Acton. Coach Bob Berry, indeed, has prepared them well for this highly emotional game this New Year's Eve. Here's Vasilia being tied up by Napier, now cutting free, passing it out to Sterikoff, and his slap shot is blocked to amaze the players by Sevigny. Zubkov injured late in the second period, back on the ice now as the puck hops into the crowd. Yurasima beating up the right side for Baikov. Baikov closing in, he's shot deflected off target by Sevigny. Napier has a roll ahead off his stick. Vasiliev with Baikov, Gerasimov, they score! A quick shot of the Soviets take the lead. Well, Vasiliev coming across the blue line using a decoy. They usually drop that pass. That time he didn't. He let a bullet drive go up over Sevigny's glove to put the Russians ahead. The Canadians had a three-on-two break. It was broken up. He comes back. На шестой минуте второго периода сборная клубов СССР открыла счет в матче. С передачи Василия Первухина отличным кистевым броском под перекладину отличился Михаил Васильев. 1-0. Steve Shep with it. All the way across for Guy Lafleur, who stares it. Lafleur dumping it in front, action shot. Shep drives the best block for the Soviet player, Kruta. Montreal with the pressure on during the power play. Steve Shep for Robinson. Back for Shep, blinding his shot, deflected. It's knocked away by a Soviet glove. Kretschak was flat on his back, and his defense player came in to bat it away as they whistle it down. And Robinson's hurt a little bit on the boards. He just tripped over his feet along the blue line. He's getting up very slowly. He stepped on the puck and crashed into the board as Kretschak in front, probably wanting to take a rest because you're going to see some fine play in front of that net. Here's Robinson. He's going to just pass that puck to Shut. Robinson certainly to go back, and Shut lets fly with a puck that's deflected up and over Trechak on the save and very quickly Kazatonov just plays it to the corner with his hand. Very good move. Trechak getting a breather. Wickenheiser has it back to Green. Green again. His shot through a maze and a sharp Trechak covers up and hangs off. Now for Vasiliev, the only goal scorer so far tonight, drops it. Gerasimov shot. Big rebound coming out of there, and Starikov went over top of Sevigny. Carbonell picks it up for Montreal. Having difficulty at the Soviet blue line. Mykov is bodied hard by Rizan Hu. And the Canadians shoot it in and skating after it. A big body check on Vladimir Zubkov. He goes flying into the board. Chris Nylon will freeze it for a face-off in the Soviet zone. Minnesota, Bloomington for the North Stars on Tuesday, then Philadelphia next Thursday to wind up this great series of 83. As a ton of booms the slap shot for Sevigny, picks it out of the air. He's got a hot streak going for him. The Soviets have one here on this power play. 45 seconds to go in it. And Bill Root's got no stick down in front of the net. The Canadians have three defenders effectively, and it's worldwide by Lariana. Denisov across. Larianov rolls it again across the goal mouth. 
with 30 seconds to go and the Montreal penalty to lock in. They do get it out. Now Root can get himself a hockey stick as it is shot down the ice. Rick Green to Robinson. Long pass out here. Tremblay, that's a good pass. Heating. Here's the shot. And oh, a great attempt by Matt Aslan just failed. He could not poke it past Kretschak. Best scoring chance this period for Montreal. Great play by Trombley, though, to get him away. Here's Green's shot. Kretschak blocks that rebound for Rack, and he stops that one, too. As the net is knocked off its moorings on the action. Crowd getting on the Canadians now for this so far ineffective power play. Mario Tremblay got a piece of it, so did Fleury keeps it in. Shoots it off to an open corner for Tremblay. With Wickenheiser, now back to Green. Green winding a shot, rebound! Shot to the corner by number 26, Mats Naslund, who had the great scoring chance a few minutes ago. Tremblay for Naslund. 30 seconds of the penalty, and Kretschak gets a piece of that shot. Shepelev bumps it against the boards. They all pile in. Sticks go high. Tremblay rolling the Soviet player who bumped him back as they whistle it down. What a hockey player. What a career he's had. This emotion affects everybody. The players, the spectators, television viewers, and yes, television crew here as well. We feel it. The electric here on the Montreal Forum. Steve shut. The alarm winding on the short side, and Trechak was on that side to cover as Sticks Go high, and a couple of punches fly. With now five minutes to play in the second period, the Soviets lead one to nothing. Lariana. Tetisov lets it go for Timonev. Timonev gave it away to Delorme. Delorme across to Carbonell, and out goes the glove of Trechak, although it would have been off the net. Guy Lafleur digs it out in front of the net, and nobody is there. Walton. Walter was back of the play. Barney Koff, nice piece of skating, finally got stick checked off to the side. Comes right out in front. Here's the shot wide from the point. Bouncing in behind for Barney Koff again. Soviet's putting pressure on now. Handled by seven. Yay, Barney Koff sweeps the net. Can't get the shot as he was bumped smartly off the puck by Walter. And back comes De La Fleur. Ahead for Wickenheiser. And Barnikov clears for the Soviets with 1.45 to play in the second period. But not all the way out. It's kept in by Kazatana. But that will do it for the second period of the third game of this NHL Soviet series. The only goal scored by Mikhail Vasiliev at the 5.08 mark. And that is the difference. The shots on goal just about even. 21 by Montreal and 20 by the Soviets, but the Soviets lead it by a score of one to nothing. Wickenheiser and Larianov, the centerman on the draw, and it is batted by Larianov back to the Montreal blue line and inside for Root. Wickenheiser doing some forechecking in center ice. Now a long looping backhand shot by Guy Lafleur sails beside the Soviet goal. Petchak is shut out. Canadian pros for over a hundred minutes now. Look at Heiser out in front. Does not control the bouncing puck. As a tan-off, the defenseman charges up with Kutoff. A wide-angle shot is off the mark. Now Ryan Walter against Timonev. The Soviet wins it. A Krutoff and his shot scores! It is 2-0 for the Soviet Union. 34 seconds into period three. Well, just a little mix-up along the boards. And Montreal should have had possession of the puck. They didn't. And Timonev coming up with the puck. When you see two Montreal Canadiens there, and he just comes up with a Kutov right there, taking a shot over the falling defenseman, beating Sevigny. В первой же смене третьего периода советская сборная забросила вторую шайбу. Отличным броском отметился Владимир Крутов. 2-0. Wickenheiser makes a smart move against Kislanov and shoots, and Kretschak blocks the drive. Wickenheiser flipping it out in front for Lafleur. He chases after it now against Fetisov, and it gets past Delorme and back down the ice into the Montreal zone. Right now, the Soviet player of the game, I would think, would have to be Mr. Kretschak, who shut them out for over 100 minutes. But the Bats Player of the Game awards will follow. 
across the goal mouth it goes from Houle. Nobody there. Now Houle rattles it off the cage and a quick shot by Kavanaugh, handled by Trecek smartly, and the Soviets shoot it back down the ice. Finally, now it does hop free in the center ice area for Sheffield. Pass breaking right wing pass for Shalimo. Shalimo shooting. Hit it. Rebound. They score the third goal. Finally, Kapustin poked at it. He missed. And then sweeping in behind him, they make it 3 0. Well, Sevigny fighting that puck from outside. I bet he lost control of it. He doesn't see it right here. You see Shalimov taking a shot. Should be handled by Sevigny. He lost it momentarily. He's looking around. It's behind him. Kapustin thought he had the goal. На шестой минуте третьей 20 минутки сборная СССР увеличила разрыв в счете. После нескольких добиваний советские хоккеисты все-таки сумели забросить шайбу в ворота Савини. Отличился Сергей Шепелев в передаче на счету Капустина и Шалимова. 3-0. Bartikov, how he missed that rebound, I don't know, but Sevigny plucked it out. Shalimov digging it free for the Soviets. Rick Green at center ice. Back inside the Soviet line it goes, but the Canadians are keeping it inside the Soviet blue line for shorter periods as this game goes along. Kapustin fades off the left board. Back to Pervukin. Did you let it off? Had him hop over his stick. Gainey tried to force him out, couldn't do so. They play it right in front. Pervukin shot block. Rebound comes out. A second save by Sevigny. Carbono golfing away at it. Gets it down the ice for Montreal. Don, watch how real strong the Soviets are on their stick. Along the boards, they're very strong on their stick when they're fighting for the puck. Vasilyev hits the Montreal line. Got cut off by Ludwig. Drop back for Pervuka and across to Vidya. Let that off. A quick shot. A fine save by Sevigny with eight seconds left in the Picar penalty. Sports off once again with Barnikov. Popping it over. A good relay and a good save by Sevigny off the stick of Luka. Acton now being bothered by the Soviet players. Luka. For Lafleur, Guy Lafleur shooting one and a stop by Trechak to amaze the players. Napier, Acton, just 15 seconds left on the power play. Napier again. Let's the shot go off Pervukin's leg and Pervukin clears off to the corner. Three seconds to go on the Soviet penalty to Fetisov. Down to the floor and front to Gainey, a shot, rebound, loose puck, they channel away it, and Kutchek has it once again. As the Soviet players step back on the ice, the Canadians almost pop one in. I want to tell you, the Canadians really have had some tremendous chances. The goaltending we're seeing from that fellow right there on his knees has just been spectacular. He's tired, he's had the flu for a week. He came in last night, got a shut up, but watch this, just a fine play. A good pass by Lafleur, very quickly across into the slot area. A great shot by Gaining. Watch Acton right on the doorstep. He's right there with the rebound. Shoots once. He's going to hit and shoot again, but he gets taken out with a little bit of authority. <laughs> we'll be in Minnesota on Tuesday for Game Five. So he asks him off across the blue line. Drops it there. Vasiliev carries on and scores. Persevered some stiff. Checking as he reached the faceoff circle and just blasted it past Sevigny to make it 4-0 for the Soviet Union. На 56-й минуте матча Васильев оформил дубль. Быков отдал на Герасимова, нападающий ЦСКА вошел в зону Монреаля, движением в центр свел защитников и сделал передачу на Васильева. Шестой номер советской сборной сохранил шайбу и броском низом в дальний угол сделал счет 4-0. So it appears the New Year's Eve party will not be quite as joyful here in Montreal as it will be in Moscow. So Yesimov is knocked down by Ludwig, who will take a two-minute penalty for tripping for Montreal. Canadians determined to at least break that scoreless streak of Trechiaks before they leave the ice tonight. But it has been tough. This man is not yielding anything to them. Here's Krutov being bumped off the play, carrying on to get a shot that drifts wide. Right out in front, hopping over Krutov's stick. 
Two and a half minutes to play now. Bettisov. Close again. He scores a slap shot from the left point. It's the Soviets into a five-nothing lead. Well, Tibianev right in front of the net. They finally got it to work, setting up the screen for Fedosov. Fedosov getting that shot down low through the screen into the net. See him take a look. Now he moves to the center. Good shooting angle from the top of the circle. Look at Tibianev right in front. Lifts his leg. The puck goes right through. Boom. Into the net. За две минуты до окончания матча советская сборная забросила пятую шайбу в ворота Монреаля. Играя в большинстве с передач Крутого и Тюменева, мощнейшим щелчком отличился капитан сборной Вячеслав Фетисов. 5-0. One minute, ten seconds to play. And from the point, it is taken away by Schwarzoff. Schwarzoff closing in, feeding on the left side, and oh, the shot goes wide by Slutkov. Now Picard coming in to help out. And it looks as though Mr. Trecek will get his shot out unless Picard can score right here with Maslund. And they do not. It's a shot out for Trecek and a 5-0 victory for the national team of the Soviet Union on New Year's Eve, the eve of 1983. And a happy Trechak, thousands of miles from home, has done it again. Well, we'd like to make this his home, the way he plays. Not a lot of teams would like it, but he is happy, should be happy. Just a superb performance by him. Tested, really, with some very difficult chances in the first two periods that could have shot Montreal into the league. He was more than equal to the task, and that's why the Soviets have prevailed tonight. So the new year will not start quite so happily for the Montreal Canadiens, who played their hearts out but couldn't handle the flying feet of the Soviets tonight to win at 5-0. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Советская сборная явно подпортила новогоднее настроение болельщикам Монреаля, обыграв их любимую команду с сухим счетом 5-0. Лучшим игроком встречи в составе сборной клубов СССР был признан Владислав Третьяк, которому трибуны Монреальского форума аплодировали стоя в течение нескольких минут. What an ovation, they're still giving it to him. They are still standing and applauding. And he comes back for a second foul. Deservedly so. He simply stood the Montreal Canadiens on their ears tonight. And they'll rise and give him one more round of applause with rings throughout the Montreal Forum. Well, he started his great career here a long time ago in that Challenge Cup. He came in here and put on quite a show. That's when he started the great Kirchak myth, and it's not really a myth. This fellow's been just superb in international hockey. Vladislav, after Prostude, he played on 0 two matches against Quebec and Montreal. Более того, его сухая серия против команд или сборных, состоящих из игроков национальной хоккейной лиги, с учетом встречи в финале Кубка Канады 1981 года, длилась уже 151 минуту и 58 секунд. После матча состоялось интервью советского вратаря для канадского телевидения. Uh, we're going to get a translation again. Seba Kukushkin is going to be in to, to help us out. Vladislav Trechak, uh, you like to play in the Montreal Forum, it seems. Yes, I like to play in Montreal Forum, but it's a very hard task. And uh, tonight it was, for me, much harder to play than uh, we played in Quebec yesterday. This was the second straight shutout. Uh, no goals. Подряд, когда тебе не могли забросить ни одной шайбы. And yesterday was the first time he had ever shut out an NHL team. Um, Canada, uh, против НХЛ. Канада, Кубок Канады против сборной Америки. Филадельфии 5-0. Uh, in Philadelphia, when our team won five to nothing against United States, they had also NHL players. Yeah, it was a shutout for Tretiak. 76 Canada. Uh, it was uh, the first Canada Cup, 1976. 
All right, so there is. So sorry, it's the third time. <laughs> and you see, I cannot believe that it's the second time in a row you see shutout. It's too difficult to play in Canada shutout. Okay, uh, I look back in the first period. Larry Robinson had a very, very big, hard slap shot. That perhaps was the biggest save of the game. Yes, I cannot understand how it happened that I saved this. <laughs> what did you do? Did it hit the stick? It was a very hard shot. And you see, I had a feeling that everybody was, uh, you see, hands up, you see, shouting the goal. I was lucky that I didn't uh, make the, my decision immediately. You see, I was looking for his shot and so I didn't sit da down. So uh, the, go uh, the puck touched uh, the upper side of uh, the stick, yes. Tremendous save. Yeah. I was lucky. I was lucky. You can say that. Uh, yeah, I was lucky. Good fortune. Sometimes the author of pretty good play, too. Okay. The, you got two standing ovations. You got one at the start of the game. And one at the end of the game for player of the game. And, and uh, uh, I know you, you, you really must know how, how uh, high regard the Canadian fan holds you. You see, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to say thank you very much for those who applauded me and they supported me. They, with their support, I will try to uh, show good performance for uh, hockey fans. And they have hopes with my uh, play and I'll try to do my best. Vladislav, take a look at the moniker over here. Uh, we've got the Larry Robinson save. What Brasok Larry Robinson? Here it comes as Larry comes into the slot. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it seems to me that it's not me, somebody else. <laughs> it was tremendous. And the one thing that I noticed on that is the, the concentration. You had your eye on the puck right after, the, as the puck was even going up in the air. Yes. All right, we're going to take a look at another one here. I think we've got another one of your, your big saves in the game. This was on Rick Green. Rick Green. Defense helped them there, keeping the... Mm -hmm. Yes, they did it. You see, it's very hard when I'm closed, but you see... But, uh, you see, and it's not so easy to, uh, to, to shut a goal from the blue line. 1980, it was the Olympics. It looked like you were in a slump. Uh, things were not going well. Uh, and then suddenly you have come to the old form again. Were you, in fact, not playing well at that time? You see, uh, one thing I have to admit that uh, for 15 years I am number one goalie in our country. And four times he, I had been the best goalie at the World Championships. And, and it's a very hard thing on my shoulders. I'm playing in Red Army and the national team. And naturally, sometimes I have upsets, but uh, less than others. That's why I am still playing for our team. You see, if I have uh, the same amount of upsets as others, Somebody will change me. Ah. I love hockey. That's why I don't want to play bad. You see, if I play badly, I leave hockey immediately. Mm -hmm. Well, he may be playing when he's 75. <laughs> you see, my wife, she's crying all the time. You see, 15 years, I missed New Year's Eve at home. Maybe next day. Uh, Great. Right. Tremendous, tremendous performance. Congratulations. Let us like that. He's the greatest goaltender in the world. I think everybody agrees with that. Congratulations again. Let us like the Soviet star of the game. And this one, Soviet NHL 83, will continue in just a moment.